Two Chairs No Waiting, episode number 187, George Lindsay, part one. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at Weaver's Department Store. Drop by weaversdepartmentstore.com and pick up some of your favorite Mayberry items. There's all kinds of things there. If you don't see what you like right there on the front page, scroll down a little bit. And over on the right, you'll see new items. Or on the left, I should say. All kinds of new items. New t-shirts. There's some special edition things there. Check it out. Weaversdepartmentstore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by audible.com. You can drop by Audible, audiblepodcast.com and get a free audiobook. Check it out. The links are on the website. Hey, folks. I'm your host, Alan Newsom. It's great to have you with me here on Two Chairs No Waiting. And this episode, we're going to be talking about George Lindsay. Now, many of you will know that uh, Mr. Lindsay passed away on uh, May 6th at about 12.05 p.m. or a.m., I should say. So it was at night uh, on Sunday morning, uh, May 6th, 2012. Well, as I record this podcast, it is the following Monday. So everybody that's a Mayberry fan has been in somewhat of a shock from uh, (laughs) dealing with George passing. But I wanted to uh, move away from just the pain, the hurt that we've been having, and have fun visiting with George because I believe that's what he would have wanted. He was a funny man. Every time I was ever around him, he entertained all those who were present. And George wouldn't want us sitting around upset about his passing he's uh you know he he has a wonderful wonderful life and if you didn't see it there's a a really nice write-up on uh that there's links to and there'll be links to in this podcast show notes uh with uh about george it's uh, his obituary it was written up uh at the request of the family and you'll be able to read about so much of his life and career including uh, what Andy said about him, uh, which I could read to you. Andy Griffith, this has been talked about already. There was a statement by Andy Griffith about George Lindsay. He said, George Lindsay was my friend. I had great respect for his talent and his human spirit. In recent years, we spoke often by telephone. Our last conversation was a few days ago. We would talk about our health and how much we missed our friends who had passed before us, and usually about something funny. I'm happy to say that as we found ourselves in our 80s, we were not afraid to say, I love you. That was the last thing George and I had to say to each other. I love you. George often told me his fondest memories of his life in show business were the years he spent working on the Andy Griffith Show and Mayberry RFD. They were for me, too. That's from Andy Griffith. Folks, uh, there's a great write-up, as I said, there, and we'll have links in the show notes to the obituary. It's located over on the eBullets uh, official website, and uh, the links uh, will be available, and you guys will be able to go and read it yourself. And I think you're going to enjoy just reading about this wonderful man's life. He had a great, great life and career, and, uh, you know, we really enjoyed it. Now, there's some also some stuff around. If you go to the Facebook fan page, for the Andy Griffith Show Rio and Watchers Club. There's a lot of pictures there. So I want you to encourage you to go over and check those out as well. If you're watching this on the video episode during the actual uh, listening here that we're about to do with George, I'll be showing you some of those pictures. Now, what you're about to hear is directly from George himself. The 15th annual George Lindsay UNA Film Festival was held in Florence, Alabama, March 1st through the 3rd in 2012. And as part of that festival, uh, they dedicated the new Black Black Box Theater, named after Mr. Lindsay. The George Lindsay Theater and the Ernest Borgnine Performance Hall ribbon cutting was a very special event because we got to hear from George. And as part of that, Well, that's what I want us to listen to. This will be part one from George. And after George finishes up here, we're going to come back and we're going to listen to uh, a little bit of uh, some listener feedback about George, where people had written in. So, folks, let's hear what they have to say about George. 
1992, in recognition of his lifetime of artistic achievement and public service, Mr. Lindsay was awarded the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters from the University of North Alabama. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming one of UNA's own, Dr. George S. Lindsay. church on Sunday, then after church going to the drugstore for a cherry coke, he's sitting around the barber shop reading this poor space and getting that shoe shine, listening to Fred the Spooky Tale, that corny joke. He's going to the rest of matches on Saturday night and maybe to the county line for a beer or two. He's sitting in your car on Main Street watching the people pass when there's nothing else to do. He's shelling corn, making quilts and Sometimes there's a remnant sale. He's getting a call in the middle of the night to get a good buddy out of jail. His book satchels and cloak rooms and notes from mother when you're late to school that's getting a basketball for Christmas and practicing the golden rule. He's getting one of those Parker pen and pencil sets for high school graduation. Or if your girl is evening in Paris perfume, he's being scared to ask it special girl to dance at the senior prom. It happens every June. It's everybody and everything, and when you can think about it, you get that very, very special itch. But the thing I like about Mayberry, most of all, it made old Gruber rich. <laughs> Visit with you a little bit and answer some questions if you've got them. And somebody has to break the ice, and uh, we need to get the gas money back. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in the business forever. I uh, started in high school. Yeah. Do you think there will be any new shows like Mayberry, or are we too sophisticated and too violent? No, they're lost in time. That's what I was afraid of. That's so sad. But I still watch Gunsmoke every, every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I had the most fun to do it Westerns. Uh, I got to do some uh, Rifleman, Gunsmoke, uh, stuff like that. And I, I went to Hollywood and I was going to work. And I did. And uh, I don't think I was to be denied. Uh, I brought the tools to work with. so. Uh, I'm a pick in the show. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I love being in the business. I'm, I'm crippled now. I'm, 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 I can't walk very well. When you were, when, Dr. Mitchell, when you were an undergraduate here at this institution, I don't think this campus looked like this, but I'm sure there were good people here. Do you recall any one individual who had a significant influence on your life? Uh -huh. Just the institution, you know, everybody, I, I, I think everybody had a, a goal or something to do, either go out and teach or, uh, you know, become an actor or, or whatever. And uh, I don't think there was anybody here just to be here, because school's not that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to, uh, to, to uh, get a degree. I, I, I always thought that was important. I majored in biological science. I don't have a clue what that's about. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Dr. Lindsay, um, there are some young, the 
aspiring theater professionals in this space with us here today. Do you have any advice for people just starting out? And, uh, advice to somebody who wants to be an actor? Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it because you, there's, you can. You know, because everybody tell you you can't do it. So many have proven that, uh, that they can do it. You know, I don't think anybody will say, hey, you can be a movie star. And you say, you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's not the easiest profession in the world, but, it, but it's somebody's got to do it. <laughs> and uh, might as well be you. You know, I would never discourage anybody from being an actor. First of all, education would be the first thing. You got the education, uh, you know, you always can get a job. You know, uh, like I did in Hazel Green. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know a thing about it. teaching school. I didn't, I didn't even say, couldn't even set my multiplication table. <laughs> I think <laughs> Dr. Lindsay, all of the characters on the Andy Griffith show and even he all just seem like such genuinely nice people that we would enjoy inviting them into our homes. Were, were they like that in real life? Uh, some were and some weren't. Uh, you didn't mess with uh, Francis Bobby, A. A. B. She should get you. <laughs> But Andy made it all a very happy working place. I think everybody appreciated the writing and the, and, the, and the labor that went into the scripts to make them write. You know, you couldn't you couldn't write Cooper any better. Uh, I had I had some uh, just I can't recall them, but this marvelous writing. And, and when you have that kind of writing. It's uh, easy to act in it. It's easy to act. Did anybody ever mistake you for Gomer? <laughs> 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 I'll get you for that. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, go <come> on. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody ever mistake you for Gomer? <laughs> now, uh, I believe he talks about it next week when we listen to part two, where George, now he should have gotten the role, or he had been picked to do the role of Gomer. It was supposed to be a one-shot deal as a gas station attendant, uh, and Jim Neighbors basically got the role. And he, I'll let him tell you about it next week. But uh, he, for a lot of years, resented that a little bit, that you know, because Jim went on to be Gomer Pyle and have his own show and everything. But then, I think George came to uh, to the a piece about it, where it's like, you know, who knows what would happen if I if I had done that? It may have been a one shot deal. And he got several years off the Andy Griffith show. I believe it was eight years uh, between Andy Griffith show and maybe our RFD, uh, where he was uh, Goober on tv maybe in seven but anyway it was uh, several years of good work and uh, he enjoyed it now as you heard that was at the film festival now that was uh march the uh first through the third and it was uh, on the on that that where they actually had the presentation for the uh the new theater the george Lindsay theater so it was dedicated that weekend and it was a great weekend i got to be there uh, Ken Junkin, Otis, he was there as well. So there's pictures. If you go out there on the uh, fan page for the Andy Griffith Show Real Watchers Club, you'll find the photo album there that you can click on, and it'll take you to a photo album called Remembering George Lindsay. If you go to facebook.com slash T-A-G-S-R-W-C, the Andy Griffith Show Rerun Watchers Club, T-A-G-S-R-W-C. And you'll be able to go and check that out and remember George. And there are a lot, a lot of photos there. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's really worth looking at. And the theater dedication photos are there as well. So you can actually see the uh, George Lindsay Theater uh, with George and 
Ernest Borgnine right there in front of it. It was uh, it was an awesome day, and uh, I was so proud and so glad that I was able to make my way over to Florence. It's only about an hour and a half or so, two hours from my house, so I was really glad I made my way over. Uh, even braving the tornado that was running around on the roads that day. There were several tornadoes that day, <laughs> but I did it. So uh, since we knew that, uh, you know, since I knew about the uh, about Mr. Lindsay passing, I uh, put out on our Facebook page to have some people write in or call in was preferable to tell us about some of their experiences. Well, first up is uh, John Lane. John Lane's a young man who's a big fan of the Andy Griffith Show. He's about 14 or 15 years old, I believe. And he does a video podcast on YouTube about the Andy Griffith Show and Gomer Pyle and things like that. But uh, here he is with his when he found out on yesterday just uh, about George Lindsay. Let's hear, hear just what he's got to say. So here's John. Hey, Alan, this is John Lane. I just picked up about George Lindsay's death, and it was shocking. I thought he was doing fine. You know, just just so shocking. I mean, I, I didn't hear any that he was sick at all or anything. It's just so shocking. I mean, it was just so sudden. Died at 83. I, I, since I first saw it, I couldn't believe it. I, I had to, you know, go to you know, Wikipedia and all these different sites to figure out, make sure it was true. So I went on Facebook and saw that what you had posted, and it was just so shocking. He was just a, he was just a great man, and it's so sad that he died. I mean, he did all his film festivals. He, he was in a lot of TV shows, and... He was, he was just an awesome guy. He was he was just really funny, and I'm really sorry that he died. It was really sudden. And just hope his family can get over it easily and never his friends. I'm, I'm sorry he died. So he just, we'll, we'll all miss him. That's all I have to say. Bye. Yeah, so that's John. He called in. As you can hear, just the, I think that's the way so many of us felt when we found out about uh, Mr. Lindsay passing. It was, just, it was a, a shock, a shock to the system uh, when we first heard it. And I don't know how long it is from the time I actually recorded this podcast to when you're actually hearing it. Could be years later. Could be uh, could be tomorrow night when it comes out on the internet. But I think uh, you'll remember. It's the same way when Mr. Knotts passed away, George Lindsay passed away. It's a blow. It really is a blow, and it and and it hurt us. Uh, but uh, but we've got a lot of absolutely wonderful memories uh, watching the Andy Griffith Show and maybe our RFD, and then those of us that were fortunate enough to be at some of the events, we've got all those memories as well. Next up, let's hear uh, John Thompson. He called in. So here's here's his, and he's going to tell us about his favorite episode. So here, here's John. Yeah, my name is John Thompson. I say about the old ministry, Dad, uh, Sunday, May the 6th, uh, Cooper. My favorite episode of Cooper was a talking dog, Opie and his friends. Was uh, playing a trick on me, telling he a talking dog. They had a walkie talk inside the dog collar. Ain't gonna be missed. Rest in peace. Bye bye. <laughs> talking dog. I love that episode uh, where the Opie, uh, you know, convince they convince o, uh, Goober that his dog can talk. That was a pretty great one. Now, finally, we're gonna hear. Here is uh, people that called in. Now, if any of you want to call in, I'd love to hear from you at 888-684-8415. Give me a call so you can tell some of your memories of Mr. Lindsay as well. Uh, here's a great memory from Robbie Curley. So let's hear from Robbie. Hey, Alan, this is Robbie Curley. I'm sorry I haven't called two chairs very much in the past, but uh, uh, just wanted to share a couple of memories of George Lindsay. Uh, may have done this on an earlier podcast, so if I've already said this, just please excuse me. Uh, we met him in Tuscaloosa at the Squad Car Nationals a few years ago. Uh, Brent, down the road from Tuscaloosa, had their Mule Days Festival, and the Squad Car Nationals were held there. I believe that was the one year that you didn't attend, and uh, George was there. We uh, were privileged enough to meet him. We uh, were able to ride to supper with him and uh, Jeff Koontz and Jim Clark and I remember on the way over to supper in the car I asked George if he knew of any surviving bloopers on the Andy Griffith show and he said no there weren't any because we didn't have any we were perfect he he got a big kick out of that and he just had such a wonderful sense of humor and the following morning we got up early so that we could get on the road and there was no one in the breakfast area of the hotel 
we just sat down with our food, and in comes George all by himself, and he asked if he could join us. I was absolutely stunned that someone, a big star like him, would want to sit down and have breakfast with us. And we had such a wonderful visit. It was just uh, incredible how nice he was and genuinely down to earth, and he'll truly be missed. He was, he was a true star. I just wanted to give you my impressions of George, which I think just about everybody feels the same way. And uh, thanks for the great podcast, Alan. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, George was a real class act, and, uh, you know, he, he, he really was a great person. Now, the only problem you ever had with George was that he was always funny. So it was hard to uh, get him to actually just talk to you. Uh, you had to really get him alone and be sitting there and speaking with him directly, and he would uh, kind of stop being on is what we call it. He's on. He's telling jokes. He's just cutting up. He's, he was funny to be around, and uh, I am going to really miss him. But uh, I hope that this podcast and next week's podcast and maybe the week after, we'll see how things go. But uh, you guys will call in and share some of your memories, some of the things you've seen. Now, I don't know if you guys have been uh, on the Internet any, but uh, if you're out on the Internet, you're going to see all kinds of stuff. If you go to the imayberry.com website, there's links there where you can go and read more about George, which is the same uh, obituary that's posted over at the Bullet. And you can also get in there and share your thoughts. And there are already, you know, several several people that have written in and shared their memories and thoughts about Mr. Lindsay. And so you can be one of them. You go in there and you can leave a note and people can come back in and just read it later and be a part of the celebration of George's life. And you can get to that if you go to the I Mayberry uh, website. And it's right now. It's right there on the front page. You'll see it right there, a memorial section for Mr. Lindsay. So I definitely encourage you to head over there and do that. Well, folks, uh, I'm going to have links on the uh, podcast website for all the things we've talked about. And I want to thank you for coming and spending some time with me just to remember George and to uh, celebrate his life and to make it through a little bit of a tough time here in Mayberry as we deal with losing one of the greats, Mr. George Lindsay. I'd love to hear from you. You can call me at 888-684-8415. You can send me an email at floyd at imayberry.com. You can drop by our fan page at Facebook at facebook.com slash two chairs. Or, you know, you can go by the imayberry community. imayberrycommunity.com also has stuff there. You can drop by there and leave messages to me there. Folks, however you'd like to get in touch with me, I would love to hear from you. This podcast is about you. It's about us, the Mayberry fans. I'd like to hear from you. We'll see you next week on Two Chairs No Waiting. Bye, guys.